Very quickly, can we read the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 43, if it can be projected? Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Can we read it together? I want to go. He said, Rejoice, all ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servant, and he will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Can I hear the loudest? Amen.
in this month of vengeance he will visit us just give him all the glory he is a faithful God father we say thank you thank you for your faithfulness you are the battle fighter you are the God who fights for your people just lift up your hands and appreciate it is the covenant keeping God is the I am that I am is the unchangeable changer is the God who does not sleep nor slumber he is worthy makite prandado shafatanados we worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. The God of vengeance that fight battles. Thank you, Lord, for fighting our battles. Thank you, Lord, for prevailing on our behalf. Thank you for crushing the strength of the wicked. We worship you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Malatalaka da da da. Jege da 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 da. Yeke va da 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 da. We worship you. We worship you. We give you praise. Blessed be the name. Lift up your hands and say with me, the God of vengeance has fought battles for me. I decree and I declare with my mouth, even as I believe it in my heart, that in the name of Jesus, all through this year, in the remaining days of this year, I will see the end of my enemies. I am prevailing on all sides because my battles are won. Go ahead once more, celebrate the God of vengeance. Thank you for fighting battles for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we declare. So shall it be. I prophesy from this month of August, the month of vengeance, God that is fighting your battle will show up in all your battles in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that in that battle, your enemies will not see your end. You will see the end of your enemies. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that the stress of life, your enemies, they are giving to you. They will pay for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the tension they have given you over the years, they will pay with their lives. In the name of Jesus, you will not cry. The enemy will not give you tears. The Bible said on that night in Egypt, every house, the firstborn was killed and there was great cry in the land. And the Lord told me that was the pain they gave to God's people over the years of slavery. And the Lord said he wanted to see their tears on behalf of his people. I therefore prophesy that your enemies will cry your cry. 
the tears and pain they've given to you over the years, they will pay for it. I said they will pay for it. I said they will pay for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me three times, my enemy will cry my cry. Shouting louder and clear, my enemies will cry my cry. They will pay for the pains I have gone through. Go ahead and begin to decree in the name of Jesus. They will cry my cry. They will pay for the pains I have gone through. They will cry my car. They will pay for the pains I have gone through. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' precious name. Quickly, Psalms 34, verse 5 from verse 15. Sorry, Psalms 34 from verse 15. He said, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Psalms 34 from verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivered him, and delivered them out of all their troubles. Please take note of that. Out of all their troubles. Let me stop there. Put those hands on your head once more. Say with me, my father, my father. In this month of vengeance, I stand with the sword of vengeance to make a declaration over the heavens that I know your eyes are upon me. I am convinced that you are watching over me. I therefore make a declaration in boldness that in the name of Jesus Christ, in this season, the wicked will not go unpunished. Go ahead as we begin to decree. Go ahead and begin to declare the wicked will not go unpunished. Thank you for your eyes are over me. Your eyes are being a focus on me. I am so confident that I am moving from strength to strength and glory to glory. I will not be stranded in battles. I will not be frustrated in battle. I'm seeing the end of the wickedness of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Please hold your hands with your neighbor and declare over your neighbor and tell your neighbor God is fighting your battles. And he has given you victory already. Prophesy to your neighbor in the name of Jesus. You will not be stranded in that battle of life. I decree your life and family. That in the name of Jesus. From today. You will begin to see the manifestation. Of your testimonies over your enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead as you prophesy over your neighbor. From today we prophesy testimonies. You begin to see testimonies prevailing in every side. Shaka da 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 Ye prandanama sapari andos i gobo sapana dosha e leke babre de 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 me se braka taramandoro po shabra zi paranda de 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 ba she pre de gebo sa i kambonde ne mo sapana ne mo sha i karaba de ge de ge de ge de ge de ge de ze prandanda de de na mo sha talaba ze prandanda de de bo sha parado Ze kalada bab zo krede de de bo shapa ve kende ne mo ze ve ne kende o le krede de 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 bo shapa na na moska. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Hold your hands with another person and decree and declare in the name of Jesus. You will see your end, the end of your battles and your enemies will never see your end. You will see the end of your battles and your enemies will never see your end. Go ahead and quickly decree. You will see the end of your battles and your enemies will never see your end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65 from verse 19. Very quickly. We read this scripture last, uh, last week. He said, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem. And joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her. Can I hear amen? amen. And the voice of crying. I prophesy your tears are over. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. I prophesy your tears are over. Amen. Your pains are over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I prophesy that every assignment of the wicked one to make you your family to cry this year will neutralize them. Amen. I rebuke death. I rebuke kidnapping. I rebuke shame and destruction. In the name of Jesus. Look at I read on from verse 20. He said there shall be no more things and infant of days. In other words premature death can no longer be had in your life. I prophesy premature death is terminated in your family. Look at the next sentence he made in verse 20 of, of uh, Isaiah 65, verse 20 of it. He said, No, an old man that had not filled his days. In other words, every day of your life shall be fruitful. Amen. Every day of your life shall be days of answer to prayers. Amen. Lift up your right hand and say, In the name of Jesus Christ, I enter into a new phase of my life. Say, Lada, I enter into a new phase of my life. That every day of my life, there shall be an increase in all sides. I will not be stranded in life. Fruitfulness in all sides. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. Verse 21, he said, And they shall build houses and inhabit them. You will not labor for your enemies. They shall build houses and inhabit them. Those who are monitoring your progress in order to attack it I decree heaven will frustrate them he said and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them you will not labor in vain whatever is in your family that people will struggle and struggle they will not see the fruit of their struggle today we break that curse that cause of emptiness that no matter what you do, you end up in pain. I break that curse in the name of Jesus. The man will say, Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But from his prayer point, you will know that his physical honor, they were never compatible with what people finally saw or what himself observed. Physically, he looks strong, he looks hardworking, he looks intelligent, but the fruit of intelligence were not there. He could counsel others, things to work for them, but he never worked for him. Today, I decree, whatever is in you that says you know your what, but you will not see it manifested. Today, I command it to be uprooted. I command the syndrome of having the resemblance of fruits without fruit in manifestation be broken the bible explained jesus came to the fig tree because he saw the fig tree with leaves leaves the leaves attracted jesus and jesus got there behold there was no fruit that satanic canopy over your life of having leaves without fruits today that cannot be is torn in the name of Jesus 
Whatever is attacking the expectation of your destiny not to be made manifest, I break their yoke. Amen. Whoever is emptying your life, I destroy them. Amen. Some years ago, I was ministering a meeting in Abuja, and the Lord spoke and said, There is a little girl here that the family are already frustrated because of a sudden torn down nose diving of her progress in her education. To understand, everybody started complaining. What do we do? Should we withdraw her? What will happen? She was just in just three. She wasn't like that. She was more intelligent than everyone around her. So did Lee. She became like, what is wrong with this girl? Everybody became fed up. And so the Lord spoke and said, it is not her fault. Her uncle sat upon her head. And the Lord said, there is nothing that can reverse it except the death of the uncle. And when the Lord said it, we said, Lord, if it is so, let the uncle die on time. So that the pain of the girl, the embarrassment in her life, we, we stop on time. And everybody shouted, Amen. But when we close, his sister remembered that her younger sister, that is what everybody is actually complaining. But who could be the uncle? Who could be the uncle? They were confused. Not up to one month. An uncle that was so close to them, closest to them, died strangely. And they didn't even remember, she didn't remember the prophecy. It was in the next exams. They just observed things changed. In fact, when they shared this testimony with me was when I went to Wary, uh, myself and my younger brother, we visited their family house. They were sharing the testimony. Then the girl was already in a higher institution. Things have changed in her. Whoever is sitting on you to ridicule you to your generation, we judge them by fire. Whoever has been assigned to empty your brain and empty your capacity, we judge them by fire. Put your hand on your head and say, I refuse to be empty. Every battle of emptiness in my life, over my career, over my potential, over my glory, over my intelligence, over my gifting, I command the emptiness. Be terminated. Be terminated. Be terminated. Go ahead and begin to terminate them. Rico Botana go da bada badush. Easy kwa pata ta 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 da 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 da. Jige de 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 de. Je karamba tos. In Jesus mighty name. Look at verse 22. He said they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of trees are the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. I said today I'll be praying over the content of your career. Whatever I do for a living, I told you, I said today I'll be praying over them. I speak today that in the name of Jesus, you will not labor in emptiness. I command you to enter into the season of your fruitfulness and destiny value. I ask today where your what has been calculated to be celebrated. I command the connection to be activated. The Bible says when Samuel poured the oil upon David, a vacancy was created in the palace. Insanity came upon King Saul that no other person was able to solve but David. I speak over you today. The oil of divine attraction and the oil that creates space for you be released upon your life. The race is not to the swift, not the battle to the strong. He said, riches and wealth are not to men of understanding or wisdom. He said, but time and chance, time and chance happen to them all. I ask that God will create your space. I ask that God will create your space. I command divine opportunities in the name of Jesus. Open your hands and say, Lord, connect me with my point of celebration of destiny. Connect me with my place of celebration of destiny. When destiny is celebrated, then there is fulfillment. When destiny is tolerated, there will be irritation. Lord, connect me with my point of celebration of destiny. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we declare. 
Look at verse 23. Let's take one or two more before we have our seat. He said, they shall not labor in vain. I ask that heaven will bring forth divine treatment on your hands right now. Yeah. There's someone here, something is always scratching you at the center of your palm. I rebuke that devouring contact. Yeah. That power that said money will not last in your hands. I command their yoke be broken. That force that has vowed that another money will not enter until you are frustrated with the one you already have and you are looking for. Today, I pray they are yoke. In the name of Jesus. He said they shall not labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. I said you will not labor in vain. Nor bring forth for trouble. I decree and I declare your breakthrough will not be for infirmity. Amen. You can imagine some people that were kidnapped, their families being asked to bring 100 million and they started selling land, everything and all. What does that mean? They brought forth for trouble. They gathered and they saved over the years, built, bought land and all. The land was waiting for when it would be used for trouble. I decree you will not bring forth for trouble. You will not be a victim of kidnappers. Their altar will not connect with your life. Their altar will not connect with your family. For your sake, we rebuke the virus in your family. Your family will not bring forth for trouble in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone that is marked for pain in your family, we release them for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lastly, verse 24, the place I love so much, and that is what will happen this month. There are some of you, even when you are not praying, God will be fighting your battles. Amen. Verse 24, he said, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And why they are here speaking, I will hear. Lift up your hands and say, God has heard me. Go ahead and begin to prophesy to yourself. God has had me. He has had me. He's fighting my battles. He has had me. He's fighting my battles. He's fighting my battles. He's fighting my battles. He has had me. He has had me. He has had me. He's fighting my battles. He has had me. He has had me. He's fighting my battles. He has had me. He's fighting my battles. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus mighty name. Please be seated for a while. As you turn with me to Exodus 14 as we read a very popular scriptures. If you are always engaged in spiritual warfare prayers and you are not conversant with these verses, then you are not actually into spiritual warfare. Because these statements, they are opening statements of the reality of God fighting for his people by covenant. And I speak to someone here, where God is taking you to, you will get there. The battle was for them to leave the land of bondage and get into the promised land unhindered. I prophesy where God is taking you to, you will get there. In the name of Jesus Christ. So those 14, I read from verse 13. He said, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians which ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Verse 14 he said, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Let them move. Let them be prophetic. Let them have the readiness to see the end of their enemies. I ask that God will restructure your position in this season. Amen. That you will not be on the crying side, you will be on the aggressive side. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Amen. 
Verse 16 says, But thou, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground and through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians. I was telling someone that the mistake, let's agree it was a mistake, a political party made by telling Christians they are not relevant to be even vice president. I said God allowed it to provoke the believers. God allow it to open their altar of judgment against them. Amen. He said, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. So I will make Pharaoh to do gragra with his people so that they will enter into my trouble. One thing I, when I try to see how they are trying to rearrange it, paint it, they don't know they've already entered into trouble in the hands of God. You've already entered. You've already entered. Why they are not listening to the cry? Why they are not bothered what people are saying? Even the committee that was set up, I learned they had a very big tough time. It's because God wants to judge them. Is somebody with me? I know so when people tell me all oh, this, I said, God has already concluded. When Kings, when uh, Samuel still bothered about King Son, he said, what, what is your problem? I've already rejected him now. I've already made my choice. We are preparing for 2023. May I announce to you that God has already concluded the election. <laughs> he has concluded. You are waiting for the election, but God has already concluded it. Oh, oh yes. What about they don't agree? What about they manipulated? If they manipulate things, they now manipulate the old system. What will it be? How will things be? I will also ask you, what about if God decides to do what he did in the days of Abacha. What will happen? What about if God decides to act the way he did in Kogi State? Where the person that won the election was never sworn in. Because he slept and never woke up. Sometimes when people are talking, I'll be asking. Is it that we don't remember? We, we easily forget things? Nigeria is God's project. God will surprise us in 20, write it down. God will surprise us in 2023. How he has chosen to do it is not my headache. He has said it and he will do it. He has spoken about it. He would, this one is not being political. The truth is, God is sending a wind that is blowing. As we begin to go into November, you will see part of the effects. December, God is not waiting until 2023. Watch November, December. There will be a major shake up. Some lives will be swept off. Some that look as if they are not dieable will be roasted. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, My father, my father. My father, my father. You have already had it in the heart of Pharaoh and his people. We know it's because you have qualified them to be judged. Arise, O oh God, Arise. with your sword of vengeance in this month of vengeance. Judge the enemies of Nigeria. Go ahead and begin to decree. Judge the enemies of Nigeria. Makaporondo se pranda na namos. Ikutama bronta namos kabarodash. Rumpama prakato. Judge the enemies of Nigeria. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When I saw one of the videos where one of them that is so wicked climbed the altar of God and was singing, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. How many of you watch it? Okay, you watch it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. When he has never stepped into church before. Do you know what God told me? He said it is prophetic. Don't be angry. I saw people angry. Hey, Todd. Hey, did, did, did. No, God said I should tell you not to be angry. 
No. He's the head of the part. God said, don't be angry. God said he knows what is going on. There are all times he formed them. If you don't go and find out, you can stylishly appease the altar of that light. You will go nowhere. It's part of the appeasing. It's so fortunate that church gave the altar for the sacrifice. That's the beginning of their sacrifice. Go and see how you can appeal their God by looking and see if you are humble to the altar. Then he will come down and fight you. Watch. God is going to fight. Those who have put Nigeria into peace. God is going to fight. Do you know how many lecturers are already hypertensive for their salary not being paid for five months? Do you know how many lecturers suddenly they've never experienced that dimension of staying that too long with that salary? They were never prepared. They thought it would be one more, two months. They were never prepared. They never saved and all. I learned some lecturers are not borrowing to eat. I know so many of them who are my friends. One of them says, sir, we are borrowing to eat. And this one throwing money up and down. Share dollars during primaries. Ha! Ah. If you know the God that is the God of Nigeria, you know that he does not sleep nor slumber. Who sent him to kill Abacha? Who asked him to kill her? He killed her butcher because God knew that was the right thing to be done to help Nigeria. Whatever God will do to help Nigeria will be done. Yeah. He's not the respect. Of, in fact, God is not even waiting for church leaders. Let them compromise. Let them take more. Let them do anything they want to do. God is going to do what he wants to do. When that of Kogi happened, nobody asked God to do it. Nobody asked him to do it. Nobody. Nobody. Just be watching. Those who think they are thick, sword will pierce through their hearts. Oh God, let me stop on this as we proceed. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Tonight I'll be sharing with you on the covenant of vengeance. A covenant is an agreement God initiates from time to time with his people and all God does is to see how his people can keep their part of the covenant. He keeps his own. When the covenant is initiated, you don't enforce the covenant again. God who has entered into the covenant with you does the enforcement himself. When the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, Romans 8 28, and, and uh, to them who are called in accordance to his purpose, he's talking about covenant. When a covenant is initiated with those God loves, God makes situation to agree with them. God makes circumstances to agree with them. How do you think? Let's just think about Is it that God has forgotten Nigeria? He has not forgotten us. He has not. We still have a lot of mission ground to conquer. A pastor was telling me that he lost... Um, is it 15 or 30 something churches because of insurgency? Closed. No longer functioning. Such a number of a church, if from one denomination, from one state, one city. The church is closed down. No more soul winning, no more evangelism. Do you know how many pastors' family in the villages have been wasted? And you think God will play games with Nigeria in 20? No. Let us understand. What about the number of blood that has flown? What about lives that have been kept like animals in the bush for, for months? Being used as a tool of negotiation for what the victims know nothing about that they agree with this government on what they should do. And it was not done. And so they are holding them. And you think our God that we serve does not see these things? The Bible says his eyes are over his people. Please, I want you to boost your confidence about the God we serve in Nigeria. He's not a weak God. The church must have made a lot of mistakes. Many perversions and error here and there. But God still has his own redeemed. That he has put the mark on their head. That for their sake, he will not allow the nation to be destroyed. 
If Abraham could negotiate with him on the number of those he would need to spare Sodom and Gomorrah, you should understand that God is still looking onto those he has put the mark on their head for their sake. Nigeria cannot be swallowed by the enemy. Tonight is not about Nigeria, but God is angry that the church is not even seeing what he's doing. He's doing something, whether you believe it or not. He's doing something. He's making them to be more guilty before him. He's making them to walk into his trap that the door of mercy will be shut against them. He knows what he's doing. He said, I will have hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. The covenant of vengeance. Genesis chapter 12, very quickly. Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah. Genesis 12. Verse 3. Genesis 12, 3. I'd like us to read together. Want to go? I will bless them that bless thee, and cause him that cause thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. The covenant of vengeance is a covenant God signed with the Jew. And he initiated the covenant from the days of Abraham. And the covenant statement is, when you fight a Jew, God will become an enemy. He will look for you and fight you until he's satisfied. And that covenant is being extended to us. When you read Galatians, it said, cause you see that is hung on the, on the cross. That we might become the blessings. I mean that the blessings of Abraham might come upon us the Gentiles. And so, by the reason of our salvation and the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, we are entitled to enjoy and operate the covenant God signed with the Jews. So whatever happens, you know, between God and the Jews can also happen between those who believe who have received Jesus and God. So the covenant of vengeance, therefore, is a covenant that God himself has signed in order, signed with his people beginning from the days of Abraham in order to fight for his people whether they are aware of the battle or not. And so please take note of these few things before we pray aggressively tonight. What the covenant of vengeance does. Number one, covenant of vengeance is the covenant that makes those who rise against God and his people to fall because of them. I repeat, the covenant of vengeance is the covenant that makes those who fight against God and his people to fall because of God's people. The covenant of vengeance makes God to bring down the enemies of his people. In next chapter 6, read the whole story of Hama. How he wanted to kill not just Mordecai, but all the Jews. And uh, look at what his wife, the name of his wife is Zeresh. Look at what the wife said to him in Exodus chapter 6 verse 13 when he had the first blow. The very night he had put the letter together to take to the king to sign and approve what he wanted to do, the evil he had planned. The very night he arrived at the court was the night the king woke up with a dream that was so troubling. And in that dream, he understood the interpretation. He didn't even wait for the sorcerer to come and interpret for him. He woke up and said, give me the book of record of Medo and Pesach. And they opened. And he read. He, no, the book is, is like a historic book. The book of records. Since the kingdom started existing, it happens in the palace. You know what has been written for years? Kings after kings. Somehow, by the arrangement, the letter was already in the hands of Hammer. God moved the king. Don't open anywhere. Open the place that talk about Mordecai, my servant. He opened only that place. And he read that Mordecai has rescued the king by revealing those who wanted to assassinate the king. The king. Now, what good has been done for this Mordecai? 
They said nothing. He now said, who is in the palace? Was it a coincidence that Hama was in the palace in the outer court at the time the king was to give her the assignment? No. Covenant of vengeance. That is how arranges the enemy to face problem. That's why I believe these people that are fighting Nigeria, disregarding the church, they are in a very big mess. Very big mess. If you have anyone that is among them, tell them that somebody said they are in a very big, they have looked for trouble. You are so quiet about it. I said they have looked for trouble. Amma said, I'm here, O king. He said, Fine, what can be done? Which honor can be given to someone the king is happy with? He said, ah, Parade him with your royal horse. He said, That's good. Do, now, it looks as if God has discussed with the king. How I want to punish my servant Mordecai. Punish him with this. He said, do exactly what you have said. Carry him and put, I mean, carry Mordecai and put him on the royal horse. Put the king's ring on his hand. Parade him round the city and say, this is the person the king is pleased with. Do you know the meaning of that? Emma has already gone round to tell his people how he would deal with Mordecai. And the king said, also go round and disgrace yourself. Let the same people see how you are being humiliated. God will pay your enemy in the coin they have come with. The disgrace they plan for you, they will face it seven times. They will face it seven times. Look at what Zeresh told a horseman, Hammer. In Exodus chapter 6 verse 13, he said, And Hama told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Look at what the wife said. Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him. Can we read that next sentence together if you are there with your Bible? The next sentence. One to go. If, are we there? Okay, one to go. If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jew, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but thou shalt surely fall before him. Do you know what the wife and his friend was telling? Ah! I just remember Mordecai. He's a Jew. Oh God, you all don't finish. Where I come from, they'll say, you all don't, baby. You all don't finish. Finish. A Jew, Mordecai, or God, you will surely fall. You will not recover. And that was exactly what happened. I decree, those who have vowed that your God is sleeping, your God will wake up and trouble them. Those who have said, who is the God you serve? The almighty God will show up on your behalf. Lift up your right hand and say, my father, arise. Let your enemies be disgraced. Go ahead and begin to decree. Father, arise. Let your enemies be disgraced. Be disgraced. Be disgraced. Be disgraced. Be disgraced. Shakaraba. Arise. Let your enemies be disgraced. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's someone here, somebody took your father's land. And the person is so arrogant that he can also deal with the family spiritually. I hear God say his own life has already been taken. The charm he has planted in the land to waste your father's children. I hear the Lord says the charm will swallow all his children one after the other. All his children are going one after the other. Isaiah 54 verse 15 says, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whoever shall gather together against thee shall do what? For, for thy sake. Because of you, people will lose their place. Yeah. Ah, you see, Haman thought he has gotten enough of the kingdom. 
and he made a mistake to trouble a covenanted person. He didn't only pay by losing his place, he also paid with his life. Those who have boasted themselves with evil altar. Here the Lord says, before the 21st of this month, their judgment will be full. Yeah. I hear God says, he will remove their canopy of coverings. Amen. Their altar will no longer shield their evil anymore. Amen. And I hear God says, they shall be disgraced. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 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 So shall he be. Very quickly, number two, the covenant of vengeance makes God to make your battle his battle. It makes God to just carry your matter for your head. Hallelujah. It makes God to become an enemy of your enemies and mix your battle his battle. Exodus 23 from verse 22 he said but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak then I will be God is speaking here I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. God is the enemy of your enemies from today. Remember the last verse we read, or the major verse we read as a key scripture in our declaration, Psalms 105, verse 15. It says, Say, when you read before, they say, Suffer no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, he dealt with kings because of them. Verse 15, Say, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. Lift up your hands unto God. Whatever has made God to turn his face away from you. I ask for mercy. Amen. And I ask for the restoration of your covenant place in God. Amen. That from today, God himself will look for your enemies. Amen. He will fight even battles you know not about. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three. Through the covenant of vengeance. Those who turn against you. End up receiving the evil they are planning against you, bouncing against them multiple times. Covenant of vengeance makes those who are torn against you to end up receiving the evil they have planned against you, turning against them multiple times. In fact, it's as if it's double, it's multiplied over their head. Some years ago, I was with a woman the Lord has blessed. How they blessed all her children. Everyone is fully established. There is no one that is struggling. To the last one, they could buy a car for them. They could do anything they want to do. We're blessed. Working in strategic places. How they got into these places, no one could explain. One day, the woman came to me and said, I'm angry with my children. I said, why, Ma, why are you angry with them? He said, you can't imagine the mother fought them in their childhood, that fought their father, that manipulated their father not to train them to school. I suffered, I did this and all. They are not the one training the children of the man. Helping the children of the man. I said, wow. He said, what do you want? He said, I don't like that nonsense. Let them just let, let it be. Everybody faces oh, I said, what do you want me to pray now? Because when people are talking too much, I just want to know their prayer point. So that we can have strike a balance. He said, yeah, I don't have okay, what do you want? He could explain what she wanted. I said, can I tell you? Do you know what your children are doing for this man's children? Are the things the man had planned that in the later years of life, your children would be the one coming to his children to beg for survival. I said, madam, what you are seeing is what the man planned against your children. Let your children do it to torment him. He said, eh? I said, yes. He said, okay, I will leave them then. I decree, the shame they plan for you, we go to them multiple times. In the name of Jesus. Ah, the sickness they plan for you will be multiplied and be returned back to them. In the name of Jesus. 
We finished one of our meetings there in Hankuri Chemist. That was where we were before we came to this place. We built a permanent place here. We, there was a program, I think, the oil of vengeance. And so as we were praying about to conclude the meeting, the word of knowledge came that there is someone here, somebody for no reason, you have not offended the person because you took the right decision. The person has vowed to kill you with sickness. And the Lord said, the sickness has gone back to the person because that sickness would have killed you, but the sickness has gone back to the person to kill the person. And the Lord has said, everybody pray, return back to sender. This sister, according to her testimony, says she never believes in prayer, return back to sender. She said, I did not pray it all. I was saying, how will I pray? A return. I don't know who is causing the sickness now. They say return back to sender. They didn't say return back to somebody's name, you know. And so she said, ah, God, have mercy on me. I can't pray that kind of prayer. Just heal me. He said, God is merciful. When God wants to fight a battle, sometimes even when you are not in agreement with him, he bypasses your ignorance. So as she got home from the meeting that day, as she got to the house, her sister was uh, like, ah, we'll be waiting for you now. Uh, have, have, they, have they told you? He said, told me what? He said, the, the, that guy that wanted to marry you, they has been calling and call, coming here, coming here, sending somebody that he wants to see you. It's very urgent. You should please come. It, it, it has to be this, this night and every. So we're wondering what is happening, whether you have had this message and you have gone from that fellowship to his place. We're worried. We don't know what it was up to or what is up to. She said, I don't know. We've not been talking. We've cut off. I was the one that broke the relationship. I said, I don't want again because God is not involved. And as she was talking, the person came back again. Ah, he said, I should still come and call. There is very urgent. So the sister went with her. On getting there, the man was crying in pain. And he said, I want to beg you. I am in terrible pain. The pain, the sickness you have been having for years. Has it not left your body? She said, what he said, I was the one that caused it because you left me. It happened here in Mina. The sister jumped back. He said, you said what? He said, I caused it. And as I'm talking to you now, what you used to experience is, is happening to me. All my body pains. The sister and her sister ran away. Three days later, the man died. If I went the sister was sharing testimony, she was shaking. Because she never believed return back to the center is a prayer that should be prayed. Lift up your two hands. Whoever they have planned against you, we multiply it against them. Those who want to kill you shall die. They shall die. They shall die. They shall die. In the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 24. There was this um, scenario where the king said, Daniel, you're my best friend, but I can't just help you. The law has been passed that whoever pray to any other God will be fed, will be given to lion to feed on. Daniel is painful, but I can't help you. I release you, you can go. And that is true, Daniel, in by the covenant of vengeance, God preserved Daniel and the lion saw Daniel as one of them. They never harmed Daniel. The morning the king hurriedly came down and said, Daniel, has the God you serve? The God, your God. That, so even the king knew Daniel has a God that can fight. Has he been able to save you? He said, yes, oh king, because my innocence is declared. Ha! The king danced and jubilated. Daniel, my friend, is actually serving a living God. Asked Daniel to come out. He came out. Look at verse 24. And the king, Daniel 6, 24, and the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Was it not only Daniel they, they sent before? Was it not only Daniel? Now, look at these people that were sent into the lions there. Daniel's enemies were sent into the lions then. Number one. Number two. They are children. The children of those people were sent in. Their wives were sent in. 
And the Bible says, and the lions had mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came. You know, the lion fasted all through the night. You know, because they, they throw Daniel to the lions then, they didn't give the lion goat again. They said Daniel's size is big enough. All of you enjoyed that tonight. And their mouth, they couldn't eat. So God made them to fast so that their stomach would be open enough to swallow more dinner or more breakfast that will come in the morning. Lift up your two hands, I decree and declare. Those who want to kill you shall die. Please, even if you forget every prayer tonight, one prayer, it's not a prayer, it's a declaration. God said, I should tell you, those who want to kill you shall die. God is not saying, go and pray for them to die. God said, those who want to kill you shall die. In the precious name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15. He said, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and we put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee. What did he say he would do? He said, But we lay them on them that hate you. I send a strong warning to all those who are fighting in your office, to all those who are against you in the environment you are. I send a warning to them that there is a covenant written upon your head. That anyone that hates you will be punished. Yeah. I didn't say it to. That's what God said here. Deuteronomy 7 verse 15. I only informed you. He said he will lay the sicknesses. The diseases you hear about. It. He will not allow it to come. He will lay it on those who hate you. Please look at your neighbor. Say your neighbor. <laughs> I hope you love me. Oh. <laughs> Be very careful, though. Mm -hmm. So when you hate me, it's a big trouble. So just like me by force. So this one is like by force. Hallelujah. Like by force. The first place I work as a young man, my boss became a very, not that he was against me, he became a very deep friend and my first, let me say, can I call him my first convert? Though I didn't lead him to Christ, I only led the secretary to Christ. But he became my first believer. He became the first person to proclaim that this young boy is a pastor. What happened? Two things had happened. The first one, somebody came into the office invisibly, put a calabash tied in a black nylon in his main office. So as the secretary came to clean up, it's a story building. As a young boy, I had a house, a, a, sorry, a room in the same building there, downstairs. The office was up. So early morning at about 8.30, I had this sister, her name is Nkechi, just screamed and called my name. Ha! I, I have not taken my bag, just ran from my boo-boo, I climbed to the reception and I didn't see her I look she was crying tears very mature tall lady tears what is it he said my eyes is blind I can't see I can't see like how I now noticed that she was holding a black leather uh, nylon on, on her hand could you what is in your hand he said I don't know as I was sweeping the director's office I saw this and I thought maybe one of the salesmen the feed rep brought money during the weekend when I was not around so I kicked the thing. It didn't sound like money. So I said, what could be this? I now matched it. And I had, boy. He so says, I opened it. The only thing I know I saw, I saw a small calabash with a black substance that got broken. And something moved from it into my eyes. I can't see. And then I was just young in the face. I was just wondering, what kind? You know what? You just woke up and you, 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 you were not. I was just what kind of thing is this? I've never read in the Bible where charm blinded somebody's eyes. Which, which pray? I was just thinking, but the only thing that came into my head, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. So I commanded, I said, Kechi, I command your eyes in the name of Jesus. Open! That was my very first miracle or first signs or wonder, we we'll call it, I saw in my life as a young person. These are some of the things that made me to believe that you can command anything in the spirit realm it was. But I started seeing it very early, innocently, not after seven days fasting and prayers, not after going to some mountains, but prayer innocently, based on God's word, suddenly, 
Something dropped from Kechi's eyes like water. Her eyes opened and she threw the thing back to me and ran away. And innocently, I carried the thing. I kept it in my room. I thought it was my director's charm. I didn't know it was what was put there to kill him. How his colleague that had the same company, the same business, competition, how he was able to come into the office invisibly, put that thing to kill my boss, nobody could tell. To cut a long story short, when my boss came back, Kechi told her all the story. He now said, where, if I, that is, where is the charm? He thought the charm was in his drawer. He said, where is the charm? He said, it's with Jonathan. I said, ah, what blinded you is with him? Could that boy be in a court? <laughs> so Kechi said, can I call him? He said, no, 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 no don't call him. Don't call him. What, what, to, 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 to bring, bring what? Kechi said, is it not your one? He said, no, I don't know anything. Please don't bring it. So when I saw my boy, I said, uh, where comes we saw something in your office. I want to go. He said, no, no, Kechi has told me I don't want to see it. I said, what do we do? I said, I don't know. He, he told me, he said, I don't know. So I called one of my friends. We bond the thing. But that wasn't what made him to believe so much in me. One day, this same Nkechi, why I brought the story is because it's connected to her, had left my boss. She was preparing to get married. And December, that particular year, was her wedding. And uh, the boss had a general meeting with all the staffs and requested who would represent the company. Nobody raised their hands. And because Nkechi was my first convert, she was, I led her to Christ. I was so happy to me. It's an honor to see someone that senior me by age, but is my daughter in the Lord getting wedded. A new experience. So I was excited and I got prepared that I was going to be there. And my boss was also excited. At least somebody will represent the company. And he told me, Jonathan, on so so and so day, early in the morning, I will come to you. I will come here, give you the transport fare so that you can go and represent her. I was so happy. Number one, free of charge. I'm going, I'm going to witness something. I'm going to spend a dime. And uh, I know my boss. He will give me more money. You know, I will have change remaining from the journey. I was so happy to me. It was my Christmas bonus. But somehow, I never knew that God was against the journey. God never wanted me to attend the wedding. I couldn't tell the reason. A day to the time, I was already said, oh, my friends knew Jonathan would travel tomorrow and everything. A day to I was praying. Early in the morning, I heard God said, my son, do not go. I said, ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> I prayed on man and on prayer. I said, this could be my mind. But the more I prayed, I heard God say, don't go. The roads were not dangerous that time now. You could go anytime, travel from Benin to the east freely. I heard God say, don't go. <sighs> I battled it that I would go. I attended a meeting. In that meeting, my body system had changed with serious uh, hotness of the body and everything. I came back, I heard a voice say, you are not going tomorrow. So I just knew God was wrestling with me not to go. And I agree with God. I said, okay, Lord, I will not go. Immediately, the body temperature disappeared. I became okay. Now, I know why I'm bringing this story. My boss was so much innocent, but God went to challenge him and warn him. Now, if someone that has not done anything was innocent, and God said, I will not still spare you. I will fight you because I have a covenant with this person. What about somebody that has vowed in your office, in your village, that you will finish your family? Or are we serving a different God? It's the same God we serve. I told God I won't go. Suddenly I became aware. And I told God, Lord, there is a there is, there is big problem. Nobody is available to represent the company. And Kechi has been promised that the company will be re represented by me. And my boss will come in the morning, Lord, what do I tell him? How will I tell him, God? If I, how will I even explain it? Me, myself, I, it was difficult for me to understand. So how will I explain what I don't understand to my boss? That God said. What about if he asks me, how did God explain to you? that you should, What about if he asks me why? I would tell him I don't know. Will I not look mad? God didn't talk. So in the morning, as early as 6 a.m., my boss was in my house, knocked at the door. And as we have agreed at 5.30, he will come and pick me to the motor park. As he came... I opened the door, he discovered that ah, I was still on my nightwear. I've not even taken my bath. He said, Jonathan, what is happening? 
I thought I was late. So what are you not going? You now use the word. We now use the word. Are you not going again? I had a little relief. I said, sir, it's like God, uh, it's like God doesn't want me to. He said, what did you say? He said, go ahead, go ahead. I said, it's like God does not want me to uh, travel. He said, please, don't go again. So I was wondering. He said, last night, somebody came twice to me in my dream and warned me. I said, that boy you are sending somewhere, if anything happened to him, I will require his blood from your head. He said, he woke up. He said, ah, who is he sending somewhere? It's only Jonathan that is going for a way. This left the gate. The same person appeared to him in the dream. In fact, that day, he said, please, take the transport. Do your Christmas. Oh. I rolled on the ground when he left. But the money was fat enough to carry me more than my salary. My boss was innocent. God did not spare him. And somebody has boasted that he will finish you. And you think God is watching him? No. Lift up your hands. You serve the God of vengeance. Whoever has vowed to take your life shall die in your place. Whoever has vowed to take your life shall die in your place. Somebody say, oh God, my father, arise on my behalf. Fight the enemy of my soul. Go ahead and pray. Mandala da 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 da. Shaka pa. Arise. Let the wickedness of the wicked be destroyed. Shaka rapa taraba. Lekoto lekoto. Shaka laga. Lekete kete 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 kete. Jegede gede 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 gede. Jegede gede 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 gede. Rata ta 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 ta. Jata ta 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 ta. Jata ta 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 ta. Jata ta 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 ta. Jata ta 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 ta. Jata ta 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 ta. Makutu barash. Hey. Gudu 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 gudu. Jugudu gudu gudu gudu. Legete 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 legete. Je para ta ta ta. We draw out the sword of vengeance. The enemies will not go unpunished. They will pay for the pain they have given to your people. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, stand to your feet as we read Psalm 79. I just discovered that our time is fast spent. Psalm 79 from verse 20. Hallelujah. I'd like us to please read together Psalm 89 from verse 20. You want to go? He said, I have found David, my servant. God has found you. I said, God has found you. God knows you. He knows where you are. He knows where you live. He knows the family you come from. He knows the battles that are against you. He knows all. Hallelujah. Let's read again. One to go. I have found David, my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said, with whom? My hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Look at verse 23. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Did you hear that? Lift up your two hands tonight as we conclude. I prophesy and I speak unto you today that in the name of Jesus, you will not struggle with your battles. The God that Johan Shofat will arise on your behalf. The Bible says, as the singers began to sing and began to say, the Lord is good for his mercy and just sorry, but he said, God went ahead of them and set ambushment against their enemies. They began to fight themselves. At the end, the ones that remain helped themselves. And when they came, they saw dead bodies with great spores. I decree and I prophesy. That in the name of Jesus, every network that has been put against you shall crumble. Amen. Ah, they shall crumble. Amen. There's someone here, you lost somebody very painfully about two years ago. And the enemy had desired to get another person. But I hear God says, in place of that person... There, are, there, there is a network of eight persons, three of them are women, that are be responsible for such arranged death. I hear God says, in place of that person they want to take, all of them will be afflicted. They will go through the pains of infirmity for months. 
The Lord said, if they confess, they will be spared. If they don't confess, they will all be wiped out. I therefore prophesy today that in the name of Jesus, the God of vengeance has gone ahead of you. Go forth and win your battles. Go forth and have your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. I therefore rebuke infirmity. I rebuke strange sickness over your head. I command it to come out of you in the name of Jesus. There's someone here that occasional dizziness. I command it disappear. Lekutu paranto shavandubis. Someone cast a spell on the curtains of one of your windows. I command that evil dust they release on the curtain of that window that occasionally something comes into your nursery to look as if you are being suffocated and before you know it, you are dizzy. Today, I dry it up! I break that spell. I release every contact they put in your house. I dust away your environment. In the name of Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead and appreciate God. There's someone here, the Lord said, for your sake, your elder brother will be redeemed. The Lord said, for your sake, the reproach the enemy had desired to establish in your family line by making your brother, your elder brother, a laughing stock. I hear the Lord say, for your sake, that agenda has crumbled. I hear God say, the last fight, the last battle he had is the last one. I hear God say, the remaining days of this month, they are days of his decoration and repairs. The Lord said, a new atmosphere will be created in his life that the directions that will come will recover his lost and wasted 14 years. In the name of Jesus! Thank you, Father. There is someone here, people appreciate you and celebrate you, but the moment they have gotten enough of you, it looks as if they never had anything to do with you again. Suddenly you look stranded and you begin to build up again, exhibit your potentials and everything and all, and, and at the peak of your celebration, suddenly something comes up that makes them treat you as if you never existed. I command that canopy around you that make those who ought to have celebrated you to be torn into your enemies. That evil canopy is torn. Man shall make room for him and brings him before great men. I prophesy today, may your potentials, talent, and gifting be preserved by God. It will profit you. In the name of Jesus. He said, he given gifts unto all to profit with her. I prophesy, your patience, your talent, your, your gifting shall profit your destiny.